Back in the mid-90s, the Tamagotchi was all the rage. A tiny digital pet you could keep on a keychain and neglect without falling afoul animal cruelty laws. The base concept was sound, though. Grow and nurture a virtual beast and experience the joys of seeing your wee beastie flourish and grow. Tecmo jumped in on this using the power of PlayStation in November of 1997 with Monster Rancher. As a newly minted breeder, you're tasked with raising your choice of a fairly wide array of monsters to fight in the officially sanctioned battle contests, hunt for lost relics, and perform menial tasks for the neighborhood. Tasks which are important to raise money to keep your monster fed and to pay for more intensive training on occasion. When you start out, you have the option to simply purchase a basic monster from a shop in town, but the real gem of this game, and the gimmick that's given its legendary status, is the shrine. Here you're able to use a CD, any CD, to generate a new monster. It reads the number and length of tracks, and a few other pieces of data to put together a unique creation. Data discs tend to provide single breed monsters, while audio discs or games with audio tracks on them will be far more interesting. Some are even able to generate one-of-a-kind monsters like the Aldebaran from Tecmo's other contemporary title, Tecmo's Deception. Though you might not be allowed to take that powerful of a monster home on your first day. Since any type of monster can be mixed with pretty much any other type, there's a fairly wide array of critters to see and raise from golem dinos to plant fairies and fairy plants. I'm currently carrying out a long-term let's play of this game via YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, allowing people to vote on our next moves and even which monster to breed next. Currently, we've got a half-naga, half-worm that I've named Curian after the main baddie from House of the Dead. Felt appropriate for this lovable abomination. Combat is an interesting situation. The attacks you're allowed to use are dictated by your distance from the enemy and how much will you currently have. Will slowly regenerates over the course of the fight, and your R1, L1 shoulder buttons move yourself forward and back. If you get too close, you can hit the square button to call your monster back and get some space. Attacks with a green icon are magic-based, and will use your intelligence stat for damage, while yellow attacks are power-based. You get 60 seconds to either KO your opponent or try to end with a higher percentage of hit points left to win the match. If you manage to win more matches than anyone else, you win the event, and in the case of an official cup, you're promoted to a higher grade, which opens up new tasks and training options. Monster Rancher has spawned several sequels over the years, and there's a remake of the first two titles coming to Switch and PC on December 9th, 2021. Sadly, the main draw of the game, generating a monster from a CD, is replaced by just choosing a disc from a built-in database. I know they had to come up with some way to do this, especially on Switch, but I don't know, it just takes a little bit of the charm out of it in my mind. What about you? 
Do you have any fond memories of monster ranching in your past? Let me know here in the comments below or on Twitter at Tesseract Unfold. Meanwhile, please like, subscribe, spread the word, and I'll see you again next week.